Hello everyone, welcome back to my workshop. I often get questions about my laser engraver and I've made a number of videos on their use and maintenance. However, one area I haven't covered is the laser tube life and what to do when it comes time to replace it. So if you want to learn more about this, stick around. So when it's an overheated or overdriven tube, you're going to slowly see the power drop off as the tube burns out. One of the best ways to identify a tube that is starting to go out is that the color of the beam is going to change from a bright pink or purplish color down to a more uh, faded white color. Another symptom of this is you'll notice that your cut jobs will start out really strong, but as they go on, they may get weaker. It's always good to check that make sure that your mirrors are aligned, that they're clean, and that your lens is clean and also not damaged. However, if everything else is in order, it's going to be time to replace that tube. So let's look at how we get that done. The laser tube sits in the back of the machine, so we're going to want to have easy access to that. Start by unplugging the machine, uh, removing any network and power, and then make sure there's plenty of room to access both the front and the back side. Next we want to disconnect the water lines to drain the liquid out of the tube. Make sure you have a bucket handy to collect all the water, and then we want to remove the top cover to give us plenty of room to remove the existing tube. Next we need to loosen up the top straps off the laser tube mounts. This will allow us to start manipulating the tube to be able to remove it from the machine. Alright, next we're going to move on to disconnecting the electrical connections to the actual tube. Uh, first we're going to remove the electrical tape that's securing the wire to the tube and keeping it away from the chassis of the machine. And then we're going to cut away the insulation that will allow us to separate the two wires. It is a good idea to leave your machine unplugged a good 24 hours before attempting this just to make sure there's no residual charge left in the uh, laser tube power supply. And here we're just cleaning up the silicone RTV that was put in the wires and untwisting. These weren't soldered together, so they should just untwist back apart. The process for the uh, negative end is about the same. We're just twisting the tube to give it better access. We'll remove the uh, electrical tape securing it in place, and we'll cut the wire apart, leaving the tube free from the electrical connections. Now time to pull the tube out of the machine, being very gentle to make sure we don't bump anything on the way. The last thing to do will be to pull the silicone tubing off that is the coolant line. If you have a little bit of trouble pulling it off, use a heat gun to soften up the silicone and then it should pop right off. And now I want to take a moment to talk about SPT Laser, who is the sponsor of this video. SPT provided the laser tube for me to make this video. They have over 10 years of experience producing high quality CO2 laser tubes, lenses, and power supplies. Their products have passed EU CE certification as well as US FDA certification. They are well known for their quality laser tubes and back them up with warranties of up to 365 days. Check out the links to SPT Laser in the description below. Okay. Now that we have the old tube out, we can take a better side-by-side uh, -side comparison of the 60-watt uh, tube I pulled and the C70 60-watt uh, tube that is would be the closest direct replacement from SPT. So uh, a few things that uh, I, I will point out. Uh, so the SPT tube is a 1,250-millimeter tube. And so as you see here, if I scroll just from the back up to the front, there's a slight uh, length difference in, in tubes here. Uh, it's about 25 millimeters different. <clears throat> and so we'll need to make sure that we have enough room with our sleeve and our extension tube on the side uh, to make sure that clears with the appropriate spacing. Uh, but the, uh, the diameter is the same. Uh, length is approximately the same. Now, uh, granted, this one's been used a little bit, so it's going to look a little bit dirty, but we can compare a couple things. The end, you see here, it was just a, a stock piece of uh, silicone tubing with some silicone squirted in for the power, the positive lead. 
Whereas on the SPT tube, we have much more substantial silicone sleeve that is also filled with silicone. It's well supported by this tape, giving some tension relief, whereas this is left open. And then we have a nice long lead. This goes over half the length of the tube, actually closer to two thirds the length of the tube. Uh, and then as you saw, as I took this one off, there was just a, basically I added some of my own heat shrink tubing uh, along with some silicone to insulate that one, whereas SPT provides a very substantial sleeve where these parts, you would slide this over the joint and you can see there's plenty of extra insulation once this gets slid together and locked in place to where your connection point is going to be well insulated. Another thing I'd like to point out is, again, on the negative side, here, there, was, there wasn't even any insulation over this one, whereas this one has a nice rubber cap. Again, it's secured to, with tape to provide a little bit of uh, relief from the wire getting wheeled around. This one was just left loose. And then if you look at the old tube, you'll notice that it is just a straight tube that's then bent and uh, really, I, I, I had some trouble with this where the, the water pressure would open it up a little bit, but it wants to kink it down. And that's going to restrict your water flow uh, through there, whereas this has more of a molded, the SPT tube has more of a molded tube that keeps that diameter nice and open so water can move freely through it. So you can see there are just some, some added bonuses when you pay for a quality tube such as the SPT C70, as this would be really a drop-in replacement for my older 60-watt uh, CO2 tube. Okay, now that we've got the old tube out, we're going to go through how you would just replace it with the stock similar size, similar length tube. You're reusing as much of what's in the machine as possible. This is the easiest way to replace your tube and get your machine back and running. Before we go ahead and install the new tube, it's a good idea to give everything a good wipe down and make sure it's as clean as it can be while it's really open. And it's going to be really helpful to take the extension sleeve off the side just to give us extra access as well. It's now time to slide the new tube in place, being very careful not to knock it into anything. Just gently set it down into the laser tube mounts. Next you want to align your laser so that it is pointing at the center of the mirror and you want to make sure the water outlet is pointing in the up direction. Now we can secure the tube in place with the both strap top straps for the laser tube mounts ensuring not to over tighten them and damage the tube. To help with the alignment of the laser first check to make sure that your gantry is level and then set your laser tube to the same level by adjusting the height of the posts for your laser mounts. Now it's time to start reconnecting everything to the new tube. Let's start by the water inlet and outlet on both ends of the laser tube. Next we'll start with the electrical connections. Find the positive lead coming from the power supply and cut it clean and then strip off the insulation about one inch back from the end of the wire so that we have a clean wire to work with. Next we need to take the wire that's attached to the tube and find the location where we can cut it so that when the wires are attached they will create a loop that we can secure the wire to the tube using electrical tape. Find your spot and leave yourself an extra inch to strip the insulation back and make your cut. Once again strip off about one inch of the insulation and then twist the wires together to make the next step easier. You'll now want to slide one half of the insulating sleeve off of the tube wire and slide it onto the power supply lead. Next you'll want to lay the two wires together and twist them together all the way until they are into one line. Then fold the wires straight and wrap the wire around itself. This will make a very solid physical connection. Once that connection's in place, find some electrical tape just to seal that last little bit, wrap it around a couple times, and then trim 
the electrical tape. Once that's in place, you can slide the two sleeves together and then twist and lock it in place. The next step is to make sure that we secure this line in place. Use electrical tape on both sides of the, the silicone insulator to make sure the wire is secured to the tube. This just adds an extra level of protection to make sure that the wire will not arc to any other parts of the machine. With the positive side done, we can move on to the negative end. You'll need to cut the uh, wire to the length. Again, strip it back roughly an inch. You want to twist those together and then fold them over straight and wrap them around again to make that physical connection nice and secure. After that, you want to insulate this with a few layers of electrical tape and then follow up by, again, mounting this to the tube, securing it out of the way with some electrical tape strapped around the tube. With the electrical connections done, it's time to reconnect the water lines and turn the pump on to get the water flowing through the tube. It's good to check for any leaks and then make sure that any air bubbles start working their way out. Here you can see on the end we have an air bubble trapped in the tube and we really don't want any air bubbles in there. So I've loosened up the mounts and I'm going to slowly rotate it to where the water outlet tube is pointed up. I'll then turn the water off and on until the air bubble escapes through the outlet tube. Once that is done I can slowly rotate the tube back so that the inlet on the opposite end of the tube is pointing up. everything flowing and secured, I can put the tube extension cover back on the chassis. So you may have noticed that when we first turned the water on, we had some very tiny bubbles uh, that were clinging to the walls in there. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, but it's almost crystal clear there. The water has moved through. It's worked out all those small bubbles. So if you have the time to let it sit, I let this sit for about 12 hours with the pump running. It can really help clear out all those bubbles and ensure that you're not going to have any hot spots in your tube when you go up to fire it up. With everything looking good, it's time to plug the machine back in, turn it on, and give it a test. Now you're definitely going to need to go through a mirror alignment process, but we'll save that for another video. In the meantime, Let's just enjoy some shots of this new tube doing its thing. All right, as you see, the, the laser tube is installed. We ran our uh, files to both engrave and cut to make sure everything is working well and it should be good to go for another thousand plus hours on this too. Wanted to thank SPT Laser once again for their support of this video and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, maybe consider hitting that bell because in the future I'll be installing a TR series tube in this laser, which is their 80 millimeter diameter tube that's shorter, which will fit within the case without the extension off the side, and it has an integrated red dot that will help with both alignment and positioning on the product. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you maybe learned something. If you have a question or comment, leave it down below. Otherwise, I hope to catch you on the next one.